Hi everyone, and um, welcome to the case study. So um, basically what I'm going to try and do for you as all is give you a bit of a, a rundown of how we go from acquiring property um, in the various ways that we do acquire it, how we then um, run it through the business, how we project manage the setups, and uh, how we then run it on the back end, automate it, and just basically the full, the full way that we run our business, which... Um, you know, is working well for us, and um, you know, I think hopefully it'll continue to work well for us. I think um, both the the short term uh, rental strategy that we do run, and also you know the tenanted strategy that we run, uh, HMOs, etc. You know, it all blends quite nicely, and um, you know, I think there is a, a great future in the business. And um, you know, obviously we will go through ups and downs, and uh, but that's that's just how life goes and uh, that's how the economy works and uh, you know by being diversified you get to pull in uh, revenue from different streams in different times and you know some depend on others and, and when everything's going well and, and all the streams are coming in then you know you have a, a very a very um, fruitful business so so in this um, video I'm just going to basically show you kind of what we do um, to locate property so um, obviously, rent to SA or rent to HMOs is very popular at the minute, and um, it is a great strategy because it allows you to get into property without actually, you know, needing to put down fifteen, twenty, twenty-five thousand pound deposits and 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 buy a um, property up. So it's a, it is a popular strategy, and uh, I think it'll continue to. landlords that you can build relationships with they do see it as a much better solution than renting to tenants um you know i don't know whether anyone saw my facebook post uh, recently but you know we've got a property that we're involved in had a, a weed farm growing in it you know i think um well, the bill yesterday which is twelve and a half thousand pounds to put that back um to a rentable condition and um, the people in there were there for four months. So obviously the amount of rent that was collected wasn't that much, um, you know, and and yeah, we can claim on the insurance or part of it anyway. Um, but at the same time, it's it just shows you that, you know, a tenant isn't a better option. Um, you know, it's, you never know what you're gonna get. You know, these guys passed the professional checks, you know, they, they, they passed passed everything, you know, they paid the rent, you know, but um it it, it was you know the neighbours that alerted it and these things do happen, you know, landlords do get houses trashed. Um don't get me wrong, you know, you do get houses and um, damaged with um service accommodation uh and HMOs, you know, but um it's kinda how you manage that and how you keep on top of it to limit your your costs when when putting it right. So but first and foremost, let's have a look at um, it kind of where we go searching, which is the beginning of the process. So for me, uh, for those that don't know, open rent is a landlord service. It's where landlords advertise uh, without using estate agents typically. Um, we use this quite a lot for our buy let portfolio. It costs £29 to put an advert on and um, and then the, the, the requests come in and then uh, the girls in the office go out and do the viewings and, and, and we get the tenants signed up. So... You know, it is a very good platform. It pushes your adverts on the right moves, Zoopla, um, et cetera, et cetera. And uh, it gives you some good exposure for a very limited amount of money uh, versus obviously paying an estate agent to try and get your property rented. So um, what what it does have is, you know, it tells you when the property was last updated. So, you know, you can see here some of them, um, you know, that was last updated a month ago. So that either means that it's been rented, um, although they do tend to take them off. So it probably more than likely means that that has been on the market for that long. Um, if they're updating it, you know, quite quite recently, um, you know, updated two days ago, it suggests that there's been a tweak. Um, I know that that flat's been on for quite some time because I've seen it. Um, you know, so you can see um, you, you can tweak it through. And then, you know, it is just a simple process of just um, opening up a advert and then just pinging a message off to to the landlord here you know if you want to rent it now you can click rent now but obviously you would probably want to try and negotiate and you probably want to see it first but you know you can just message the landlord um, now when you do message a landlord typically they are going to ask you who's it for um, you know who'll be living there how long do you want it for are you employed you know because that's the questions that we ask um, when we get an inquiry and uh, they are 
um, the type of questions you would ask a normal tenant. So we want to use it for a different purpose. Um, they tend to just my strategy is to keep things sweet, so just um, short and sweet. So just is this available, and then from there we kind of um, try and get the meeting. I think it's a lot easier to to open up and and build a relationship face to face than it is over email. Um, you got to remember that people are going to be um, people are going to be asking all the time. I've got corporate let, or I've got a corporate company, and we need you probably for this, 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 and this. You know, they're getting it all the time now. So it's um, you know, you've got to be different and, um, you know, is this available or, you know, can I make you an offer on this? Uh, you know, that just gets their attention and then you go into the dialogue and then, um, you know, we'll look at negotiation further down the line. But um, that's kind of all we do at this point is just search and ping those messages off. You've also got a spare room. Um, now, spare room is typically a room by room rental platform. It's for HMOs and minimos. But what you can find on, on spare room is is if you get a full house, I found one here. So give you an example that shows you there that both these double rooms are empty so I would think that this um, landlord is going to be open to, to possibly uh, looking at maybe a, your offer or you know if you can take the full house they're going to be quite interested because you know right now they've got two rooms empty i.e they've got the full house empty so they're also going to be paying the council tax paying all the uh, rent and rate etc etc so they're the type of adverse that you want to be looking at you may also get um say if you get some of the bigger ones at five six betters and they've only got one room uh, full or two rooms full you know, they're also worth chasing because a landlord would probably serve notice on the tenants and come to an agreement with yourself if you're then going to agree to uh, take the full house and they've been struggling to to get it rented so again it's just a simple you know click the message button and start getting into dialogue with these people uh, Gumtree. Now, Gumtree have um, a you know a lot of properties get listed on Gumtree. You know, as you see, there's that flat there from Open Rent. Um, different price, it's 400, 500 quid there. Um, can't remember how much was an but I think it was less than that. So that actually shows you that um, they've actually reduced that down, which you know suggests a bit of a motivated seller. Uh, you know, and 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 they're wanting out of that. Let's have a quick. Yeah, there we go. So there's that there. And there's that same picture there. So it's £500 there. It's 475 there. Updated it two days ago. So they've reduced that £25 a month two days ago. Um, they might be worth it. You know, that shows you that they're motivated and it's not moving. So, you know, they're, they're the type of people. And this is the kind of things that you need to look out for. And by doing research on all the different platforms, you start to take note of the different, of the same pictures. Um, so on here, you have um, a lot of adverts. And you can see here that agency. Um, you know, so you, you kind of want to, you don't have to avoid the agencies, but you, you do. The idea of what we do is to try and get direct to the landlord because I think we need to discuss um stuff that a estate agents don't really fully understand and b you want to get your business over you want to get your personality over you want to get you over and you've got to build that trust because at the end of the day um a lot of what we do is is changing the mindset of a landlord and if you cannot change the mindset of a landlord um you will struggle to allow them to give you their property um for you to use as a service accommodation or a hmo purpose now, when you click through on the rental page, um, if you scroll down here, you can actually get rid of the agency adverts. So you see there, agency private. So you want the private adverts. Now, there are some agents quite tactful, and they can sneak the adverts into the private section. Um, you can normally tell the difference between the private ones and the um, estate agent ones through the photographs. Um, although not all estate agents use professional photographers, but you know the, the photographs tend to be a lot worse from um, private landlords. I mean. You know, a dull photograph like that isn't going to um, inspire many people. But um, you know, these are all the private. So again, you know, anyone listening on Gumtree does tend to be quite motivated, and so they're looking to save money by listening on Gumtree rather than you know going to estate agents or listing them on the other portals. So there's plenty of places here, and again, we're just clicking into them. Is this available? And then going through the motions um, with it with the the landlord. Um, now, a lot of people obviously want to get direct, but there is all.
if you want to acquire 20 serviced accommodation units in the next um, 12 months, I guarantee if you rang every agent on those 3,912 res results and had a good pitch, um, you would get your 20 units and it does just come down to volume. But one good thing um, that I have this property log extension on my um, Google Chrome and it is a free install. I use it a lot for the, the buy, refurbish, refinance stuff um, more, um, which I'll, I'll come on to in a second. But um, you know, it tells you here uh, when the initial entry was found. Now, right now, as I'm recording this, we're in the midst of um, obviously the coronavirus and um, service accommodation is pretty much shut down. Uh, we're still getting some bookings through the week. Obviously, the country is not on lockdown, um, so there are businesses still operating. Um, but, you know, it is going to blow over and, um, you know, it, it is going to blow over and things will get back to normal. So I'm not too concerned at the minute. But you can see here. There are a lot of people concerned at the minute because, you know, I've never seen this before, but there's a lot of furnished properties which have been listed yesterday um, and today, 21st, 21st, you know, a lot of furnished properties. These will have once been uh, rented as serviced accommodation units and they're obviously um, maybe panicking slightly and uh, obviously there, there is going to be very limited bookings over the next month, um, but, you know, th these are... These are good opportunities to pick up. These people have decided in their heads that they no longer want to be in the market. So, you know, there's deals to be done with, with these people. If you, if, you know, like, like myself, you're confident that this is going to come back and you can make a business out of it going forward, which also is great for the service accommodation um, industry and the players that stay in it because there's going to be less competition. Um, you know, so hopefully you can improve your occupancies. Uh, going forward and um, with a bit of luck tweak the rates up slightly because you know the less competition means you can um, you know charge a bit more so I do think there's a good future in, in the service accommodation business even in the midst of this virus and as you can see here you know there's a lot of properties going online today um, you know a lot of the student properties as well so obviously the, stu the, the universities are pretty much shut down so I think whilst the students will still be obligated to pay their rent I'd imagine a lot of them won't so uh, these guys are obviously looking to just get these these properties filled so right now is a good opportunity to to get out and about and um and try and, and make some build, build some relationships and, and start speaking to agents about what you do do um and then in um another sort of thing we do very well is we we do a lot of free advertising so you can freely advertise through gumtree and through um facebook Facebook Marketplace especially. So um, what we do is I use a software called Canva and um, this designs adverts in minutes. Um, you know, you can come up in seconds if you're really good, but you know, in minutes you can knock up sort of quite professional looking adverts. Um, you know, and also adverts don't need to be all singing, all dancing stuff, um, but you can knock up quite professional adverts quite quickly, download them, and then you can get them posted. This is uh, properties wanted in Newcastle. So here, property wanted Newcastle in the property wanted section. You will find there's our advert. You know, we, we try and post one advert a day. Um, there's another one. There's another one. There's another one. There's another one. You know, these adverts. There's another one. We do get uh, responses off these adverts. Um, you know, we, we we litter the pages with adverts. And, um, you know, they all look different and um, we do get inquiries from landlords who are desperate to get out their properties and any adverse that we do get, any sorry, sorry inquiries you do get from this do turn into um, quite hot leads and uh, normally good deals because, you know, they're, they're, they're coming to us, they're reaching out to us, they're interested in us and our service. So, um, you know, it, 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 it puts you on the front foot from the start. Now, Facebook Marketplace. Um, for some reason, my laptop doesn't allow me to log into Facebook. I can only do it on my phone and my iPad. But um, posting that same advert with the same description. So if we just have a quick look in, in a few of these. Um, if you have a look in, in, in the descriptions, just, just posting it, you know, a quick bit of information. Um, I'll buy, I'll stay, cash buyer, you know, contact us. You know, just, just brief information. Um, and... You know, post them in marketplace. You can just put five hundred pound as the price or whatever, and you kind of put it as a, as a, um, as a. Sorry, I'm just seeing one here. Yeah, just put it as a, 
re, uh, for sale off a rent advert, depending on what you're trying to trying, trying to achieve. Um, here's a sort of rental advert that we've got up there. Um, so this is to try and attract, obviously, either rent to SA or management units. Um, you know, kind of just imagine never having enough and uh, another fine tenant finance fee to pay, non going management fees, no tenant hassle. You know, so just getting a bit of brief description to hook them into. Okay, well that sounds good. You know, tell me more, tell me more, and then obviously the contact details. Um, to, to, to go forward with that so that works really well for us and um, you know I would advise everybody to be doing that and the more the more you market you know the, the, the more volume you're going to get out there and um, the more you get yourselves out of obscurity and the more leads that you will generate and all this is free you know you don't have to be spending money to do this and um, which is the great thing about it you don't have to be buying Facebook adverts or you know buying Gumtree adverts um, it's all free so it's a great way to to get you get your snowball rolling and um, and and start making contact with landlords and opening up conversations with them across these various platforms, and then once the conversations opened up, um, you then go into um, sort of the script that we we're, we're going to go through later on in the, in, the, in the negotiation side of things, and um, you know why what we do benefits um, the the landlord better than taking on a tenant, and um, how you can sort of get around the the mindset of um, Airbnb, stag hen parties, places get ruined, etc., cetera, etc., cetera, because that is all that they think um, at the minute that someone comes at them with with the proposals that most people do on a day to day basis by saying, you know, I, I, I do corporate lets. You know, the first thing that the landlord thinks is Airbnb, stag hen do's, place is going to get trashed, and that's why a lot of people can't get past the gatekeeper. Um, they can't move forward and um, and they can't even open that negotiation or open that conversation and say, well, actually, you know, that's not exactly what we do. We do this, this, this and this. Um, and and once they do, you know, I've been there where I've, I've had the, the pushback, even in the property when I've gone on viewings, oh, we don't do that, we don't do that. And then you start explaining what you do and the benefits and how it's, you know, a business. So you're going to want it for a long term as long as you can continue to make profit. You know, tenants don't want places for long terms now they just want six 12 18 months and then they want to move on you know they live very transient lives now and um and you can see the eyes light up you know when you when you start hitting home that this is a better service and i fully believe it is so you know if you believe in your offer you can get your offer across enthusiastically and it starts to make sense to them and they start to open up to it and that's how uh, we've acquired a lot of property quite quickly and it's by you know getting the message being good at speaking to people being good at building relationships and being very good at handling objections because you will get a lot of objections from both estate agents and from landlords um and and that is a skill in itself um you know which which you can learn and um but we'll, we will come on to all that so that's how we find our rental properties now obviously um we also buy um buy to service accommodation so um we we, we are very you know quite a lot of methods of how we do it but you know typically we're looking for buy refurbish refinance um properties which i'm going to cover off on a video in itself on how you how you do it and, and how you work, make the numbers work and how you can finance them um but in brief what we do is we go looking for um we go looking for properties that are needing um some work and and then we we get in touch i buy a lot of the stuff through the agents i think you can get direct vending you can get um you can get you know good deals off motivated sellers but at the same time i guess the price range we kind of buy in um sort of your 50 to 125 grands the estate agent fees aren't huge for for that type of um, value so a lot of customers um sorry a lot of vendors are quite happy to use estate agents because they're not going to pay huge fees so a lot of the deals um, that we get are from estate agents and you know you can still get below market value deals from estate agents you just got to find the right properties and you've got to be good at negotiating um you know so i'll just have a, a quick scroll here and I'll, I'll show you how we what kind of the properties that we do look for right so i've just set my search quickly at 50 grand to 70 grand uh haven't set any minimum beds uh, anything yet so just to have a quick look through what we're looking for is is, is either um again with this property um log extension it shows you when when the initial entry was found so if we scroll down you see there there's a price change there so the first listed november last year and in january they've knocked it down um here's a good one 70 grand 
So first listed in April 2018, suggests to me that this this probably probably doesn't work price wise. Wingrove Avenue, Fenham, yeah, two bed flats not worth that in that area. But it shows you here, you know, that they're reducing it down. Um, so it was originally probably it was 85 grand. It's now 70 grand, so they're not 15 grand off the price in the last year. Well, nearly two years now, isn't it? But you can see here the pictures are a bit grubby. There we go. This is the type of stuff that we want. They're good refurbishment projects, and you'd be able to add value. Now, I'm not sure what the, um, the price. Uh, let's have a look. Wingrove Avenue, Fenham, any four nine B. So, what we do is quickly jump up here, go to house prices, sold house prices, open that up, and then just put in N E four nine A B. So what we want is any title on a flat, because it's a two-bed flat. Uh, and you can see there, so uh, 2006, 75. So there's not much to compare on that street like for like. Um, let's just go out a quarter mile. Two-bed flat, 51, 87, three-bed. 58 77 so you're probably looking at like i would probably cautiously say 70 grand for that um which is what it's advertised for the problem is it needs some work by the looks of it to tidy that up plus we're looking for below market value so i'd be looking to buy that at about 50 to 55 grand and if i could get it for that i'd spend a bit of money on it and then we'd get the uplifting value of 70 75 grand from uh, the revaluation but um, that's the type of stuff that we're looking for. You could still go and see that, um, and obviously there's, there's, you know, they have reduced it quite a bit in the last few years. But the fact that it's been on quite a while suggests to me they're not that motivated about selling it. They're just kind of keeping it on there, and they might take and take something around that price. But you never know until you've gone and you've built the relationship and, you, and you've spoken to them and you've made an offer. Um, you know, but there's plenty of properties, and I'll cover the buy refurbishment uh, strategy off in more detail later on. So that's it for now. Um, hopefully that's given you a bit of an insight of how we kind of search for properties and uh, how you can then search for properties and start finding some deals for yourself. And uh, we'll move on to the next part of the case study on the next video. Thanks.